I want to now talk about the minimum spanning tree problem. Minimum spanning tree problem. Or MST. In this problem, the input is a weighted undirected graph. Undirected graph G. V E W again the W is is the function the weight function from E to the real numbers okay so the weights are on the edges and the output is a spanning tree that has the smallest weight okay so it's a tree T which has the same set of nodes as G but has a subset of the edges of of G so E is is a subset of E T is a tree, and the sum of the weights, the sum of the weights of E for every edge in T is this sum is minimum. Okay, so this is the minimum spanning tree problem. You give me a graph, directed, undirected graph, it has weights on the edges. You want from me a tree that has all the nodes in the graph. This is what it means to be spanning. And the edges, the sum of the weights on these edges has to be minimum over all possible spanning trees. One important assumption I will make here is that the graph is connected. Okay, if the graph is not connected, there is no spanning tree. Okay, there is a spanning forest, but that's not of my, my interest here. So I will assume that the graph is connected. Okay, now. This is a very, you know, very important problem in graph theory. And this is one of the problems for which a greedy algorithm works and works, you know, it's a natural way to, to, to think about the problem. And one algorithm for this problem is known as Prim's algorithm. Prim's algorithm. How does Prim's algorithm work? So imagine again that tree T, the tree T that I'm looking for has the set of edges uh, the set of nodes v sub t and the set of edges e sub t okay and i want to basically build them and we start here by saying let v sub t be some arbitrary node okay so this is some arbitrary node take whichever node the first node you encounter in the dictionary representing the graph you can take it okay arbitrary is not random i'm not talking about randomness here i'm talking about just take whichever node you want the first one you encounter and so this is the node from which we will start building the spanning tree. And the spanning tree now has no edges in it whatsoever. Okay. Then I will loop for, if that graph has n nodes, I will loop for n minus one times. Okay. Why do I need to loop for n minus one times? Because if I have a spanning tree, I have a tree on n nodes, that tree will have n minus one edges. So I will loop the size of v minus 1 or n minus 1 times. Each time I will be adding one edge to the spanning tree. Okay. By the time I added n minus 1 edges to the spanning tree, then I have a tree that spans to the entire graph. So then I will basically say, find the lightest, or I shouldn't say that because it could be multiple ones. Find a lightest edge uv e equals uv in in the set e the set e of the edges of the graph such that such that we we want to take that u is in v sub t and v is in v minus v sub t okay what what am i doing here i want to find the lightest edge that connects the nodes that i have in v sub t to the nodes that are outside v sub t i will get back to this very quickly now uh very soon and basically once you find this edge now you can basically say v sub t since u is in v sub t i don't need to add it v is the new node that's not in, in v sub t i can now add v sub t i can't add to it the node v and the e sub t is e sub t 
union this new edge that I found E. And then we basically return this pair V sub T, E sub T, which is the, the, the minimum spanning tree, okay? So how is this algorithm working, okay? How is this algorithm working? It's very important to, to again, I, I need to, to scroll down so that the, the pseudocode will, will disappear now. But again, think about it at, I am growing this set of nodes V sub T, which will be then all the nodes in the spanning tree. At every point, I look at a node that, at an edge whose two endpoints is one is in V sub T and one is not in V sub T. And I add it to the spanning tree, okay? So if you look at it at every point, at every point we have, if I have, this is here, the, the, the subgraph that has V sub T in it, and this is going to, to have the nodes V minus V sub T. And what we are doing here, imagine that in V sub T here and E sub T as well, that I have the tree that I am building now, okay? So imagine that I have this tree that that I have been building. And on V minus V sub T, there is the rest of the graph that has the node V minus V sub T. And the remaining part of the of the minimum spanning tree is somewhere there. Okay, so imagine that this one still has, let's say, something like this. And this star here on the right, the, the five node uh, subgraph, that it's I'm, I will add it to the minimum spanning tree that I'm growing in a greedy manner. I'm adding it edge by edge. So what we are saying here is that look for that edge E, look for that edge E that connects U and V, for example, something like this. So this will be the U and V, and this will be the lightest edge of all possible edges that cross from the left to the right here. Okay, so U is in V sub T and V is in V minus V sub T. It's very important that we chose it like this because when I choose it like this, adding E to E sub T will not create a cycle, right? Because if I, if I found the edge E equal UV to be an edge between two nodes in the same in here, I would have created a cycle and this is bad, okay? So we don't want this. This is why the algorithm will always look for a node that is not in V sub T, okay? It's not in V sub T. So this is how the algorithm is going to work by finding a node that is in V minus V sub T, such that that edge that connects U to V, whatever U, okay? We are looping over all U's there in V T, and this has the lightest edge. Now, why does this guarantee that the, the solution, the minimum spanning tree that Prim's algorithm is building is is uh, optimal so again we go back to the same proof technique and we say let's assume it is not optimal okay so let's assume that this edge e let's assume this edge e that the algorithm chose should not have been added so again we go back to the same to the same technique imagine that let me label it by blue now imagine that this this uh, subtree here, both minimum, the Prim's algorithm and the optimal solution that is not Prim's algorithm both agree on. Okay, so let me take it back one step. Prim's algorithm, we, are, we wanna prove that Prim's algorithm is optimal. Proof is by contradiction, I will assume it is not optimal. And then I will say that it's not optimal, it means that the span, minimum spanning tree or the spanning tree returned by Prim has heavier weight, has a weight larger than another spanning tree, okay? So let Prim's algorithm, the tree returned by Prim's algorithm, and that other solution agree on this blue subtree. And in the next step, Prim's algorithm is gonna choose E, this red edge E, whereas that optimal solution will have another edge, E prime, okay? Something like this, okay? So again, this we go back to exactly the same technique where we are saying, let E and E prime be the very first edge in which both the, the prim's solution and the optimal solution disagree on, 
okay? Because remember that the greedy algorithm is building the solution step by step. So Prim's algorithm added the first edge, the second edge, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and these five edges agree between Prim's uh, algorithm tree and the optimal, the optimal solution that someone claims it exists and it's better than Prim's algorithm. So now let's focus on the next edge that Prim's algorithm will add and let it be this red edge E. And we say this is the first edge that is going to differ from that optimal solution. And in this case, it's E prime, okay? So the optimal solution will have E prime. Prim's algorithm will have E. So now, again, as we did before with the compatible intervals problem, we will see exactly the same issue here. E must have a weight that's smaller than E prime because if E prime had smaller weight than E, Prim's algorithm would have chosen E prime. Okay, so since E has lower weight, so I, again, I will claim or make the statement here, W of E is smaller than W of E prime. Okay, of course, if it's equal, then we don't have even an argument here. Okay, so E and E prime were the two first two edges whose weights are different and Prim's algorithm chose E and the optimal solution that we are assuming for the sake of contradiction has. W of E, the weight of E must be smaller than the weight of E prime. If it wasn't, if the weight of E was larger than the weight of E prime, Prim's algorithm would have chosen E prime. Okay, so the weight of E is smaller than the weight of E prime. Now, what is the weight of the minimum spanning tree. Prim's algorithm, Prim's algorithm says that, okay, let me actually color these ones here by orange, okay? So let me color these by orange. So under Prim's algorithm, Prim's, Prim's tree, Prim's tree, the weight of this is the weight of blue edges plus the weight of orange edges plus the weight of E. The, the, optimal, the optimal tree that we are assuming just for the sake of contradiction, its weight is the weight of the blue edges plus the weight of, for example, in this case, the weight of the orange edges plus the weight of E prime, okay? Now, if you think about this, the blue edges plus, pl the blue edges plus the, the orange edges plus E, plus e prime, it's almost a minimum spanning tree or it's almost a spanning tree, but we have a cycle. Now, that cycle is caused because we have E and E prime. Now, if I look at this optimal solution, imagine that I subtract from it, I subtract from it, let me actually put it in a different color. Imagine that now I subtract from it the weight of E prime. So I remove E prime, but I add E. So if you remove E prime, but add E, we have broken the cycle and we replaced an edge E prime by another edge E whose weight is even lower. So we cannot have E prime we have, if we actually replace E prime by E, the only thing we can do is either keep the weight the same or even improve the weight of the solution, okay? So this is the, this finishes the proof. Again, to recap the proof, assume that Prim's algorithm is not optimal and that the algorithm, that, that it gives us some tree, and but there exists another tree whose weight is smaller than Prim's tree. Then I will say, let us look at the very first edges that Prim's algorithm added and the very first edges that are in the other optimal solution in which both agree. And let us focus on the very first edge that the, the algorithm and the optimal solution disagree on. These two edges are E and E prime. E is an edge that Prim's algorithm decided to add. E prime is an edge in the alternative, more optimal solution. And then what, how I proceeded to, to show that this doesn't exist is by arguing that if I replace E prime by E, I still will have a tree. 
I will still have a spanning tree. And that new spanning tree that I created have even better weight than the original one. So I transformed now that optimal solution that someone claimed exists. I transformed it to be exactly the tree that was returned by Prim's algorithm. And without violating anything, without creating a cycle, still maintaining a spanning tree and only improving the weight of that. And this completes the proof of, of Prim's algorithm. Now, if we go back, I want to go back to the pseudo code just for a second and look at the running time of this algorithm. The running time of this algorithm, if we look at it, you know, this one here is these two are O of one, right? And then we need to, to look at the, the loop here. So we need now to do this does n iteration. So if the size of V is n, so we have n iteration every time we need to find the lightest edge and then we need to add it and so on. Now, if we use a uh, min heap, uh, which is a binary search tree that maintains the minimum element at the root and finding the smallest element is O of one, but this is not O of one here. I cannot say O of one. The reason for this is because I am maintaining in a heap the a heap of size n the nodes the nodes v in v minus vt in terms of their distance to that set v sub t okay so we have a minimum heap that maintains that has the same number of nodes as the number in v minus v sub t so if we still have 15 nodes in v minus v sub t we will have a minimum heap with 15 nodes in it for every node there at the top of that heap we have that node V whose edge that connects V to a node in VT, it has the smallest weight. So that next time we choose it. Now, when we use that U equal UV, E equal UV, and we add V to V sub T, now we have to update the heap, okay? So this is why this ends up being O of log N, because we need to find the lightest edge and then we need to update the heap there. And these are O of one here in, a, in, in some sense. We just need to add the edges and the nodes. And the number, sorry, the num the, the, this O of log N is the time it will take to update, to, up, to, to make one update to one node. But this, this O of log N end up being done M times, okay? So if M is the number of edges, we have to update it m times because with every edge e that we inspect or we add, we have to update this, okay? So the the details of the running time, actually you can find them written in the, in I'm sure in CLRS or in any other algorithms book, you should look at them because using the heap is what gives us the O of m log n. If you don't use the heap and if you assume a uh, uh, JSON matrix, you will get to some uh, running time that is uh, quadratic. But if you use a heap to represent the nodes in V minus V sub T, in V minus V sub T, then updating something is in, in that heap is O of log N, but the number of updates we, we end up doing is on the, in the worst case is, is the number of edges in the original graph. So the running time of the Prim's algorithm is O of M log N. Okay, there could be the n log n factor there, but since I'm assuming the graph is, is connected, m is always larger than n, or m is larger than or equal to n, okay? So Prim's algorithm is a, is, a, is a logarithmic algorithm, it's m log n. It is correct, as we showed, the proof is again the same technique as we show for the, for the compatible intervals problem. You first assume the, the algorithm is incorrect. You focus on the, the sub-solution, the, the prefix of the solution on which Prim's algorithm and the other optimal solution agree on. Focus on the first edge they disagree on and, try and, and replace the edge in the optimal solution by the edge that Prim's algorithm found. And you will find that you can only improve that. So why not even take it from the, the beginning which is the contradiction that there is an, a solution that's better than Prim's algorithm.